Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. The slow boat from China came in. Dun, 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 dun. Across the waves of the ocean. And with it came along a box. A box from... Yeah, your usual manufacturer, Baofeng. Long standby time, high capacity Lion. Oh, sorry, long high capability, whatever that means. Uh, and sound quality clear, long distance, Baofeng radio. And what do we got here today? We got a brand new Baofeng. Yep, it's the Baofeng 5 Pro Max, K5. Pro Max. Um, <clears throat> K5 Pro Max. Is that like in reference to K5 as in Quan Sheng? Because this is really getting messed up and confusing. Now, I no longer have my UV K5 Quan Sheng radio because I gifted that. But for those of you that know, it kind of looks exactly like this. The only difference the up and down keys are up here rather than here. Uh, something a little bit like this. This is the K6, obviously. Not the 5, but um, pretty much the same similar layout. I don't know what's going on with these companies. Um, this is supposed to be a new radio uh, with Airband, uh, UHF, VHF, Mm, frequency mode. Uh, let's go there. Oh, here. MERS. Wow. Okay. Uh, now, I do have my own programming in here. This is like uh, GMRS and whatever. It's the classic lady. What kind of amusing is this? Is like This is a complete takeoff from the Quan Shang. It's like literally the same knob. I think probably the same company that makes it. So, we're all thinking, at least I was, uh, this is a brand new radio from Bao Fang. And I thought, wow, a uh, brand new radio from Baofeng. That's got to be interesting. Until I got this radio uh, last week, had an opportunity to test it out and play with it. It's not a bad radio. It's it's a nice feeling radio. In here. Uh, that is air band coming through. I live close to an airport. So it does come in. And uh, then upon closer inspection, I realized. Welcome. Frequency mode. Whoops. Oh dear. Channel mode. Wait a minute. Is this? Uh, is this the same radio? Ooh. Yikes. It is the same radio. It's exactly the same radio. Sorry, I didn't put the bell clip on this one yet. Oh dear. USB? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the common thing now. Everybody's got USB, but let's see. Whoop, battery. Okay. Battery. Uh, okay, so. Whoop, oh dear. That battery works there, and this battery works here. Wow. Same thing. Uh, let me see. Do they start up the same way? Whoa. Welcome. Channel mode. Oh wow. It's the same screen. Same audio. Same button placement. Uh wait a minute. Whoops. Same menu. Well, with the exception that everybody kind of noticed lately, this one instead of exit says axed or whatever that means. I think it's a misspelling, but it's kind of funny that they would make a mistake like that. So put the aches to get out of there. So what is this radio? Well, this radio is exactly a reskinned 5RM. And when I say exactly, here's the thing. I connected this radio to Chirp and read it as a 5RM, which by the way is programmable in Chirp. And then I programmed it through Chirp using the 5RM. So this is exactly the same radio as this. 
This is rated or sold as a 10 watt true power radio. Now I did test it with my SWR meter. Um, it comes up to standard Baofeng 7.89 watts uh, in UHF 7.91 in VHF so neither of them even hit 8 which is very much in line with most Baofeng radios. Uh, like all Baofeng radios this has the K-Connect so it's got the 2-pin connector for programming or earpiece it has the push to talk button and the two programmable buttons flashlight on top uh, nice thing about most of these new ones now have the USB charging port so you can just charge either in the cradle, it does come with the cradle or you can charge it through USB which is nice if you want to carry it in your car or in your truck, you want to throw it in there you have the ability to just charge it with a standard USB cable as opposed to having the cradle in the way which is bulky and doesn't work now configuration as far as this is concerned you can go to memory mode or VFO mode by selecting this button, you can go A or B channel it's a nice color screen. I mean, there, there's nothing fancy about it. You can change bands from UHF to, to VHF. There's nothing, I mean, exceptional. Uh, after after the introduction of the UV17 Pro GPS with Airband, which has its own following now, it's its, it's, its own cult radio, um, I don't think Baofeng has come out with anything else. Now, here's the thing, and here's my theory on Baofeng radios. I don't know how much of that holds water or not. This is just strictly my theory. Um, some people have said that, oh, these are clones and these are fake Baofengs. There are no fake Baofengs. A $25 radio uh, is not going to be counterfeited or faked by anybody. It costs more to, to manufacture and produce. Baofengs are produced under license by several from several companies in China. We all know this. Uh, they're manufactured, uh, as a matter of fact, as uh, I think Po Fung in uh, Hong Kong or something like that. But in different places, there are different factories that are all licensed to manufacture Baofeng radios. And if you go up to Baofeng or to go to, to a manufacturer, you can have them manufacture pretty much any feature you want in a radio as long as you order a small quantity. A small quantity can be as small as like 100 units. Uh, thousand units if you got God, the price becomes ridiculous all you have to do is like go to Chinese wholesale sites and you can see you can you can order like 50 units or 100 units and they'll customize it to whatever you want so depending on the quantity you order you can have your own case you can have your own name you could you can put your own name on there if you want to uh, or you could get it as a Baofeng and it can have certain features I think that was the case with the 17 the UV 17 Pro GPS which was sold basically by one supplier and everybody else that was getting them was getting all sorts of other units. Now, I'm getting a little tired of this Baofeng thing going on because after the 17 they came out with the 18, the 21, the 22. I keep seeing posts on Facebook or in user groups uh, or questions that come on, on from my subscribers or people that, that see my, my reviews and they're asking all sorts of questions. Is there a CPS for this? Well, short program it. You know what? Chirp is trying to keep up with all of this, but the thing is, there aren't that many variants. There are some, but there aren't that many variants. Uh, and a lot of people say, is this better than the UV-5R? This has nothing to do with the UV-5R. The UV-5R was a completely different radio when it was introduced, what, 10, 12 years ago, or when it, even more than that. It was a smaller radio. It had a monochrome screen, even though it had three colors in it. Uh, it was nice and small and handy. It, it did what it did for the time. These new radios have a lot more features to them. They're more bands. There's, if, if for whatever int reason you're interested in airband, these have airband reception. Is it good? Uh, how does it compare to other radios? It's okay. It's okay. It depends on, on how close you are to air traffic. I mean, if you're not close enough, you're not going to pick up anything on it. But then again, that's, that's the same for any HT or any radio. If you're too far from a signal, you're not going to get anything on it. You can't expect miracles from these things. And that's the same thing that applies if you get a quality, if you want to call it that, name brand radio. And you know what I'm talking about, the two, three, four, five hundred dollar radios. If there's nothing within range, you're not going to get any signal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how expensive your radio is or how much money you pay for it. If there's nobody close by transmitting, you're not going to get anything. So it doesn't really matter. 
So is it okay? Yeah, for $25 or $30, it's fine. It's it's a decent radio. Would would I pick this over a UV5R? Anytime. I've pretty much got or getting rid of most of my smaller radios. I probably have a couple of UV5Rs I would keep. But I've gone to these nice color screens. I like them. They're more fun to look at. I live close to airports, and so I like listening to air traffic. Uh, one of my best friends has been a ham amateur for ever, and uh, we always used to sit and listen to aircraft traffic together. It's just if it's something you enjoy, yeah, it's fine. If you don't, there's no need for it. You don't have to. It's there. You don't have to use it. Again, for twenty five bucks, you still get it. It's 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 included. The newer ones have longer batteries. They 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 last longer. They feel better in the hand, and they have more features. These also copy frequencies now. So if if you there's a button you hit, and then if there's another radio transmitting within range, you can pick up the frequency, and if it has any codes on it, you will get that as well. Now, there is something interesting that I noticed. The UV, or the 5RM, has an FCC ID. This radio, which is the same radio, does not. Now, this is manufactured by Fujian Baofeng Electronics Company. This one is made in China by Nathan Road or Kowloon, Hong Kong. So this one is made in Hong Kong. And this one is FCC approved. This one is not. Now, this radio is open on all frequencies. You cannot transmit on airband. Don't ask. None of them do. Um, now, I neither endorse nor condone unlocking radios. Um, you know, act responsibly. Use the radio you're licensed to use. If you're not, please don't use it. Do whatever you want. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not the FCC police. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. However, this does come unlocked just like this one did. That one's unlocked too. This one came unlocked. I was not sent these radios. I bought these radios with my own money. I paid for them and waited for them to get here. I've already reviewed this one. I'll have a link down below. Um, that one was bought on Amazon. This one was not available on Amazon, so I ordered it from AliExpress, so it took quite a bit of time to get here. Um, I do not have a link for this. I don't particularly endorse this radio. Uh, would I get it? Hey, I got it. There's the question. Okay, Would I keep it? Would I use it as my day-to-day? -day? Probably not. There are other radios I prefer as my everyday carry radios um, with similar features or some better features. I'm not sure. But we'll go over that in another video. Anyway, um, I hope I gave you enough information on this. By the way, I tested this before I forget. I tested this uh, with my tiny SA. Now my tiny SA is a little bit out of whack, so this particular radio did not come through as very clean. This one, for some reason, does, and I've seen reviews from other people on YouTube where some reviews say this is clean and some reviews say it's not that clean. Mine was borderline. This one comes out borderline. This one did not come out clean. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, not on VHF, not on UHF. There were harmonics there. Now it could be that my tiny SA is out of whack and I may need to replace it. Uh, my SW meter is good though and I did test it. Like I said, it's under 8 watts in either band. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Leave me comments, ask questions. I try to respond to all questions as quickly as I can, most of the time within a few hours. Um, subscribe, please. Share. Thanks for watching.